Hi, this is Zero Control or O Control from Make Noise. It's an analog touch sequencer and controller. It's in the same form factor as the No Coast, pairs well with it, but also with any semi modular or Eurorack gear. In this video, I'll go over what O-Control does in detail and look at quite a few patching and pairing ideas for it. Let's start with an overview. At its heart, O-Control is a controller that can store eight sets of three different values per step. You can send these values through the outputs using a pressure sensitive surface, or you can also use it as a sequencer to step through steps in a pattern. O Control has 11 touch plates, eight of which, as I showed you previously, are pressure sensitive. And if I take out this kick, you can hear that they respond nicely both to touch and selective pressure. And then the three additional plates will start the sequencer, change its direction, and then this is the interrupt pad where you can interrupt a sequence if it's on or have it ignored touches to the surface. When it ignores these touches, it's still pressure sensitive, so you can still use this output to modulate something else while a sequence is running. Like I mentioned, O-Control has three CV channels or rows and lets you program three values on a per step basis. The channels are called pitch, strength, and time, but really you can use them to control anything that can be voltage controlled, but the strength and time rows do have some extra capabilities. More on this in a bit, of course. The knob positions represent unquantized values, meaning that if you want them to control the pitch of the synth, you'll either need to tune it by ear, use a tuner, or use an external quantizer module. Every time you change a step, whether manually or by running a sequence, the three values in that particular step get sent out these three outputs. Hopefully you can see this on video, the double dark frame around this row correlates to this output, the white frame correlates to this one, and then the single line dark frame correlates to this row. These two outputs respond to touch. You already saw this light up to represent pressure and that's control voltage sent out to this output. And this output is just a simple gate that gets sent out when you touch a plate, regardless of how hard you touch it. Like I mentioned, the strength and time row have special powers. Strength impacts these outputs. This is a simple gate output that triggers every step, but its level will be dependent on the value of the strength row. That's why this output is called a dynamic gate as opposed to a simple gate. Then this output appropriately called the dynamic envelope sends a dynamic envelope depending on the strength value. I'll patch this using a stack cable so you can both see and hear it to control the dynamics of O-Coast. Then sample drum has a neat little CV scope option. And if I plug that into here and this into the CV input, we have a little scope here. But if I hit play, you'll notice that the steps that have a strength below one o'clock on this knob trigger simple envelopes at a lower level. So you can use them to control a VCA like I do here. But beyond one o'clock, steps will trigger an attack sustain decay envelope with increasing sustain as the knob is turned beyond one o'clock. Now the length of these steps, let's just maybe increase a few so you can see a long sustain, changes based on the speed of the sequence. So the dynamic gate and dynamic envelopes 
grow and shrink based on the speed of the sequence. The time row also has special powers only by the way when this attenuator is turned up. So when it's down, every step takes the same amount of time regardless of the knob positions here and you can use these through this output to modulate anything you like. But then if I turn all these values counterclockwise and start my sequence with an unattenuated time value, then I can increase the length of certain steps. Now these step lengths aren't quantized, so you need to play it by ear, quite literally. I'll show you a trick to get slightly more consistent time values if you want them later on in the patch ideas section. So I think that pretty much covers all the controls. Let's take a look at the inputs and the outputs. All the outputs have an arrow pointing up out of them. Another way to look at this is that from this point and on to the right, everything is outputs. From this point on to the left, everything except the clock output are inputs. We already covered the dynamic step gates and envelopes and the touch outputs. Each step gets its own gate, which goes high when that step is triggered. And then on the input side, you can stop a sequence by sending a high gate into this step. You can reset a sequence by triggering this and then change its direction with a trigger into this input. This is the clock input, which gets mixed in with the clock that results out of speed and the combined output comes out through here in a very interesting and rhythmic way. We'll take a listen to this later on. And then the strength and time inputs let you replace voltage coming in through these two rows with an external source. And then you can always attenuate that external source using these attenuators. So that's pretty much what each knob output and input does. Now let's take a look at a few patch ideas and ways you can use it. I'll start with some basic patches. We already saw earlier how to control an external synth in keyboard mode, meaning when you play the pads manually, you need to send out to the very least pitch through the pitch output and then use either pressure or gate on a VCA or just to trigger an envelope. All three rows send values so I could use this, for example, to patch into the overtones of Ocoast. And then since time is irrelevant when you're playing in keyboard mode or manually, you can also patch time into a different parameter. Let's just patch it into here. So now on a per step basis, I've got control over pitch, the overtone timbre and the multiply timbre. And yeah, this can change on a per step basis. Like I showed you before, nothing is preventing you from using the touch gain output to trigger another layer on a different synth, which is the kick sample in this case or anything else. And I've got this set up to trigger samples based on control voltage coming into it. So let's just go into here and say I'll use this cable to trigger maybe different samples. So now, as opposed to the kick on this step, I could trigger the snare here and you know any other sample. So hopefully you get the idea how just as a playable surface, you can control three, four, five parameters, potentially even more with a stack cable on a single step basis. Okay, so that's O control as a touch controller. Let's take a look at it as a sequencer. It's really quite similar. The biggest difference is since we're not touching the surface, we need to use the gate outputs or the clock, by the way. And we can just hit play and whatever happens, happens. We have control over direction like I showed you before. And that's a nice eight step sequence or more depending on how you treat timings. If I reduce timing down, it's a simple eight step sequence. What if we want shorter sequences? Well, remember I mentioned earlier that each step outputs a gate. I could take any one of these gates. Let's just take the last one to keep our options open and plug that into the reset input. We can now run a seven step sequence. We could obviously move this to earlier gates and run shorter sequences, but another way to run shorter sequences, reset doesn't really reset the pattern to the first step, but rather to the last plate that's touched. So that's the reset input. You could also use the stop 
input to run one-shot sequences. The sequence will stop and repeat the last note, and if we turn its strength down, then it can just behave like a one-shot sequence. So this will trigger every time I press the touch plate and I can trigger shorter or longer sequences based on where I touch. Then finally, there's the direction input. Let's use that. And you can see our sequence will run in one direction and then reverse direction when it hits the gate that triggers the direction reversal. So it's a nice way to back, bounce backwards and forwards around one spot. And if you want to make a shorter loop, you can use a stack cable and O control comes with two of these, a short one and a longer one. So I could say maybe choose these two steps and then either bounce around them or between the two steps, ping ponging or, or moving backwards and forwards between these two steps. Okay, so that's basic O control patching. Let's look at a few more advanced ideas. A nice trick to both freeing up the timing row to modulate something else and to get more consistent rests is to take the gate output of the step you want to play slower, plug that into time, and then set a parameter that you think is appropriate, either manually or by ear. Then you can replicate that with a stack cable. Now I verified this with make noise, it's okay to plug multiple outputs into a single input. So if I wanted to place even rests on this step and this step, maybe I want this step instead. And you can actually do this to more steps if you liked. Let's maybe do this for now. This one. And you've got global control over all the rests using the attenuator knob. And then these are free to modulate anything else you want. Now, up until now, the pitches in this sequence have been somewhat erratic. Now, if you've seen my no coast pairings video, you know that pairing a Eurorack sequencer was one of my recommendations. There, I used a one track sequencer, so having three tracks opens up quite a few options. I'll show you one that I particularly like, and that's sequencing subharmonics on the no coast. In case you're not familiar with subharmonics, they're like fancy sub oscillators that, in addition to playing one or more octaves below the main oscillator, can also play notes in other frequency subdivisions that can sound quite pleasing and unique. I demonstrated three ways to create subharmonics in my main no coast video. I'll link to that below as well. But the easiest one is by simply connecting the square output of the main oscillator to the slope trigger. And once we've done that, use the pitch row. We could use any row, but use the pitch row to modulate time rather than the pitch of the main oscillator. And to hear the subharmonics generated by the slope, we'll plug it into here. If we take a listen to the slope, we can see that the main oscillator is forcing it to re-trigger at different subharmonic intervals of the main oscillator. Then we can pick the subharmonics, and essentially, we just created an analog quantizer. The results can be, without a quantizer, quite interesting. I could always bring in my friend Keystep to transpose the whole thing on a vault per octave basis. So if I plug in to the pitch output and control the main oscillator, the results can be quite interesting. Now, one caveat, this isn't a perfect subharmonic oscillator because we should be modulating just the rise for this to work well and not rise and fall, which is what time does. But still, there are interesting surprises based on how we change the main frequency. And remember, these are subharmonics of a main tone. So if we want to listen just to the tone, it's this. And if we bring in the subharmonics, 
I think that there are a lot of interesting subharmonic nooks and crannies to explore here. Okay, let's take a look at a few other things that these two can do together. We saw how to use this as a touch keyboard. We saw how to use it as a sequencer. Let's take a look at using it as an oscillator. In case you have O control around and you're not using it as one of those two, you can still use it as a pretty neat sub oscillator. Now this should work just fine with other synths as well, not just with an O coast, but if you take your main oscillator and plug it into O control's clock, you can see it running pretty rapidly now. We can take a listen to it by plugging the dynamic gate into this input. Then let's also use key steps gate to trigger no coast. So this is our main oscillator. Okay, this is no coast. Now we're using the dynamic gate output, so that's controlled by strength. Let's see what happens if we take every other step and put it on maximum and then put the other ones on the minimum. Let's bring O control gradually in we get an oscillator an octave below. And we can mix between the two. And if we do this, maybe not every other one, but every other two. And if we turn the knob so that not every other knob is turned up, but only two knobs are turned up, we get a sub oscillator two octaves below. If we turn down the middle one and leave just one, we get a sub oscillator three octaves below. And we can play with the mix by bringing these knobs up. So let's go one octave down. Okay, this is our main oscillator and our sub oscillator or oscillators get interesting intervals at fifth intervals based on which of these knobs you turn. So a lot of fun to be had by playing with these and wave shaping ourselves into sub oscillators. Well, I hear you say sub oscillators are nice, but come on, where are the sub harmonics? And you'd be right, and it can. Now the reason I'm so interested in sub harmonics is because they're a great way to naturally get more out of your melodies without much of an effort. Let me explain what I mean, but first, how do we turn this into a subharmonic oscillator? Well, first thing you need to do is turn down all the strength knobs except one. And to get not sub oscillators, but subharmonic oscillators, we need uneven subdivisions. To do that, we'll plug, let's say, gate output three into the reset input. Now we have a two-step sequence, which is half the speed of the main oscillator or clock in this case, which is a simple sub oscillator. But if we, and you guessed it probably, unplug this and maybe plug it in here, we get a third of the main clock, which is an F, then a fourth, which is another sub oscillator two octaves down, then a fifth, which is a sort of like an A-flat, then another F, and then a D-sharp-ish. Really interesting harmonic series. Now, moving this cable from jack to jack isn't a really compelling way to perform, but remember what I said before, reset doesn't reset the pattern to the first step, but rather to where you last touched. So if we turn down strength here and put it back here, play a note, we can play subharmonic divisions of it just by changing the start of the sequence. So let's try this with a melodic sequence. This is just the main oscillator, no subharmonics, because we're here. Let's add sub oscillator is easy, but another sub oscillator. Subharmonic. Another subharmonic. Not all of them sound good. Okay, remember, this is the original sequence. Sub oscillator. Subharmonic. Sub oscillator. Really interesting stuff, I think. So just another way that O-Control can be a nice companion to your 
no coast or other synth. Okay, let's clear this up and look at a few modular pairings. Now, obviously the options are endless, so I just wanna focus on a few features that I wish this had and see how we can add them using external modules. The first feature that I think is nice to add to this is quantization. I've put disting in quantizer mode. There are obviously plenty of other quantizing modules that are dedicated for that. Then quantizing the pitch row is really pretty simple. You plug it into the input, then send the output to pitch. The rest is pretty much the same. Let's give the dynamic gate output some love. And wherever you turn the knobs to, you'll get a quantized outcome. As you change them, the note obviously changes as well, but it's quantized. You can also just use touch to show this. Simple quantized values. Another feature that would have been nice here would have been glide or a slew limiter to make transitions between steps smooth. Again, that can be fixed with a fairly cheap slew limiter module or with this thing that I guess can do anything. Let's pick algorithm B2, which is the slew limiter. So a slew limiter will, based on the slew, cause a glide between notes applied to all the notes. Later on, I'll show you how to make per step glide. The longer the slew, the smoother the glide. Now this means you can also use this as a mod source, sort of like a complex LFO using a slew limiter. And remember before in one shot mode, you can also use this as a complex envelope. Another interesting pairing I think is a module that can play different sounds based on different CV that it gets. Obviously samplers with slicers do this really nicely or just samplers that can play different samples based on control voltage. So in this case, I wanna use the time row to select different samples here. So I'll take the time output, plug that into this CV input, which selects the sample. And I'll connect touch to trigger the samples so I know what I'm picking. So now just turn this knob and select a different sample. Let's just make a simple pattern. Maybe put a kick here and hi-hat here, hi-hat here. And here, snare, hi-hat, hi-hat, hi-hat. So to hear this when I play the sequence, I need to trigger it. I can use these triggers, which is fine, but if I'm out of triggers for some reason or want to use strength for something else and I don't want it to impact this, I could always use the clock output. So we've got a basic beat. You could also use the touch place to perform with this, uh, say for quick fills. Now it won't remember where you were in the bar. Uh, but there's a way around that. You could uh, say patch a reset cable for a quick fill. And yeah, of course you can experiment with this to get uh, various options. And then another neat trick we could try is to use the strength row for controlled glides. Now for this, because strength also impacts the output coming out of here, like I mentioned earlier, you can always use the clock to trigger events. So let's unplug this. And this cable is a little bit too short. So let's replace it with this. They don't call them stack cables for nothing. So now we've freed up this row to do whatever we want with it. So let's plug it into the slide control. Turn everything down to begin with to make sure we've got slide free steps in the beginning. So with all these turned down, we've got a regular pattern where we could choose to selectively add slew at various steps. And that's how you can program per step glide. Okay, a few other miscellaneous ideas that I won't show here because time is short and it would require a slightly bigger setup. You saw how to create less than eight steps. If you wanna create patterns with more than eight steps using more than one row, you could use a sequential switch that paired with a clock divider of the main clock can transition from row to row to row based on whatever subdivision you want. It could be a straight pattern up to 24 steps long or bouncing around these steps any way you want. Another tip for quick percussion, if you've got a noise generator, just hook it up to a VCA and this envelope and you've got quick hi-hats based on the strength sequence. One last thing I promised we'd check is what happens to this output when we mix an external clock 
together with whatever is going on with timing here to listen to this clock. I'll plug it into the hi-hat here. So timing here, as you remember, obviously impacts the way the clock runs. And that clock gets sent out here based on whatever timing you choose here relative to the overall speed here. If I lower this down and plug in an external clock for this, I'll just use this envelope and get it to loop. So that's my clock here. Anyway, let's just assume that this is a uh, clock we're going to check. So as we increase the impact of these steps, interesting things start to happen. All right, it's a nice way to sort of stay in rhythm with these guys. Without this, okay, this would happen. But with this, oops, I think we get a nice and potentially pleasing and interesting rhythmic outcome. Okay, let's take a look at the pros and the cons. First, a pro and a con. This is a standalone desktop module. It can't be mounted in a Eurorack case. Now, I'm sure there will be hacks like there are for Ocoast, but if you don't want to void your warranty, it's desktop only. The good news is, of course, you can take it with you as part of a setup without worrying about a case. So like Ocoast, it's a nice portable desktop unit, but you can't easily mount it in a Eurorack case. Aside from that, the disadvantages that this has compared to some other sequencers are the ones that I fixed with external modules, things like adding quantization, glide, the ability to create sequences that are longer than eight steps, and just something you need to be aware of overall. This is an analog sequencer for better and worse. Better means you can do crazy things with it, like I showed you before using it as an oscillator, but it doesn't support MIDI or anything else digital related like timing or quantization. On the pros side, if you want hands-on control of CV, there's plenty of it here with 28 knobs, eight pressure sensitive pads, envelopes and plenty of gate outputs and a lot of self patching options, whether as a performance instrument, a sequencer, or even an oscillator, there's certainly a lot to explore here. And if you want to explore further and you like the tips and ideas in this video, there's plenty more where they came from in my ever expanding book available to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful, ring the bell after subscribing to make sure you don't miss the next one. Feel free to ask me anything in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.